Welcome to Berlin, where I have uh, Joachim and Oskar from Hammerfall with me. Guys, uh, first things first, uh, how is Hammerfall doing circa 2019? <laughs> Better than ever, I would say. We're peaking. We're late bloomers. <laughs> no, not really, but it's, uh, it feels really good, you know really proud about the new album and everything around you know concerning hammerfall so i think we're at a good place in life and in, in our okay. career too uh, may the peaking be because of a uh, half marathon <laughs> run in Göteborg in Göteborg's Varvet uh, so where did that idea come from to include that in hammerfalls uh? i mean i've been running now for the past five years and uh, i made a decision uh, late 2012 that I don't really I saw all my friends around me but not Oscar and the guys in the band not everyone but uh, that they at the age of 45 the bellies were really really you know big and I mean I, I don't want to die of a heart attack at age 49 so I decided to start you know, to, to work out and since I hate going to the gym I decided to pick up running and see if that worked for me and it actually did and I'm um, you know I uh, and in order to uh, to have something to look forward to. I also uh, enrolled for a couple of races at an early stage. I was really slow, but I managed my first 10K, took almost an hour at a race, but then I did my first half marathon the year after. And this, about two days ago now, I did my, my second half marathon. So, no, it's uh, just a, it's most a statement. I wanted to give myself the, uh, the chance to age with some sort of dignity and, uh, be on stage without, you know, losing my, you know, having to catch my breath in between every two sentences or every two words. So uh, for me, it's working out pretty good. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was you and Frederick that did the race, right? Yes. Yes. So, uh, and now you have the Hammerfall edition of Running Clothes. And uh, <laughs> so is this going to be a recurring theme with the band? The, probably the fittest band in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Did you write that? In the, in yeah, the it was it was my girlfriend's idea actually to write that from probably the best beer in the world, the Carlsberg slogan. I wasn't sure people were going to get it. I thought maybe people were going to think it's uh, uh, a bit boasting or anything. But it was it was just. Uh, it could fun, have been you know. probably the fattest band. In the world. <laughs> it could have been. <laughs> now it's the fittest. No, it, it's uh, it, it was a, a, a good, it was really fun seeing them run, and I have uh, I missed the last time Joachim did it. I didn't see him, uh, but this time I, I saw both of them. At least now we encourage the uh, the fans to do something with their lives and you know stay healthy, because all of a sudden you you don't need fifteen thousand to sell out an arena. You only need ten thousand because they're getting bigger. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's go to the music. So uh, let's talk first about uh, We Make Sweden Rock. Uh, of course, a tribute to Swedish rock and uh, metal scene. But where did the initial uh, idea come from to do this kind of song? You read the mails today, didn't you? Yeah, I was checking my, my uh, mails just to see what we're, how this started. I, I remember Joachim sent me something uh, saying the idea, like basically laying out the idea how about this. We call it we make Sweden rock or something uh, and uh, uh, the whole like imagining behind the, the song and I was in my in, in, at the store just doing grocery shopping and I, but I, I, I read that now I remembered also that I, I'm just in the store but this is a great idea I'm gonna go back home and you know f finish it and then the next day I um, went out into the studio and tried to write something and it was very uh, inspirational I was working on a song then but because he was so, uh, his energy came through the mail and, and I was, I got inspired by that as well. So uh, it went pretty quickly to, to uh, finish or at least continue working on that song for a while. It was a, it's a cool idea. You had to do it the right way uh, in the end, but I think we definitely... Yeah, I mean, I already had the, the lyrical concept uh, already that it should be all built by references from other bands. So the whole story of the song is references from song titles or band names or, or phrases so uh it's pretty funny and it will be very very clear when you see the the video that comes out uh, in june for that song because then all the references to the bands will be there and uh it's, it's really cool yeah that sounds uh, really cool um so how important has the swedish scene been for you over the years rock. We made Roti Rock. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I would say that it, uh, many bands that are not included in the video or the song, of course, uh, were bands that I grew up with that never made it out of their, you know, the territory, small cities of Sweden or, you know, where I grew up. But a band like Heavy Load, for instance, meant a lot to me when I grew up and they d didn't really make it outside Sweden. They had a little, you know, commotion going on in Japan, but nothing, uh, nothing that big. Uh, but of course, then Europe came. I mean, they'd be like a world, not a world band like that, but they, I mean, they were touring around the world, you know, making a, I would say, the, making fans interested to see what's going on in Sweden. But the biggest, the most important time, I would say, was the beginning of uh, the 90s with the Gothenburg sound. Because that had a, such an impact on the metal scene worldwide. So that's really, really where I see a big change. Yeah, let's go to the new album, uh, Dominion, here. It uh, will be out on 16th of uh, August. Uh, so what kind of music are we going to hear? <laughs> uh, World music? Yeah. <laughs> no, it, I mean, the... the, the the Hammerfall sound is pretty refined by this time. Uh, I, I think people know what to expect from a Hammerfall album, but the the challenge for us is how do we make it even better uh, when we write it? And that's not always something you can control, but you can always uh, put as much effort as you can into it. And f this album feels very um, energized. I think we feel it, it sounds like not the eleventh studio album from a band, but maybe the first, like the the level of energy or or. Um, uh, it's it's so yeah. vital. Yeah, no, exactly. you know. So I, I, I mean, song wise, it's it's a great album. I think it's an album that we've worked so hard on making every little detail as good as it possibly can. And I don't think anybody. I mean, we, we had a motto for this album that I mean, good is not good enough. It has to be great. So I think that's also why it took so long. Also, we allowed ourselves to invest a lot of time in the songwriting process to be able to let the songs mature and go back and listen to them so we could make changes in time before the actual production. I mean, sometimes you're just so rushed in the studio, like you, when you're done writing, you record and then you're done. And then maybe you realize afterwards, like, shit, this would have worked better. So that's why sometimes songs sound a little different live, especially in, in the vocal department. But Dominion to me is a, like a, a well-balanced dish where every song is like a, an ingredient to make this the, the, like the, the perfect dish. Every song is, I mean, it's the variety of songs, it's fantastic. I mean, we have you know, really fast tracks down to a piano ballad, but every song is needed in order to make this album. So it's... Uh, I'm, I'm really proud. Okay, and uh, so how was the recording process this time around? Yeah, really simple. Uh, I, I have, as a whole, I mean, uh, I can only speak for myself, really, but I felt we did, we, we didn't rush anything or, or stress or anything. We just let everything take its time. Uh, and there was a lot of... Uh, Weekends we don't didn't work. We just we, we treated it, I guess uh, during the recordings of the of the drums and the bass and the guitar, it was more like a nine to five job than anything else. Even though we didn't end at five, but you know, we we still worked during the day until maybe eight or something in the evening, and then on Friday uh, we had half a day and Pontus went home to Stockholm, and it, it, that made for a very like just we had the luxury of doing that. It made for a very uh, relaxed atmosphere in the studio and also made, made means that we could invest like Joachim said all the time that we needed into the songs and so I, I think it was a tremendous uh, time and then that's of course my experience yeah, yeah. then comes the vocals <laughs> that's different of course there's always a lot of pressure no yeah. not really but like I said earlier I, this was the first time I was done with all the vocal parts uh, writing before I entered the studio there's always something. I mean, when you started to record the drums already, everything was done. So I could focus more on, uh, uh, you know, getting all the lyrics, you know, perfectly fitted into the songs, maybe do some changes here and there. So, uh, but then I went to, to Los Angeles to do the vocals. And uh, I mean, it was really relaxed. 
I, I really, you know, when I get the flow, I, I can, you know, sing every day for, you know, as many days as we need, more or less. But I did the same thing that I took the uh, the liberty of taking a whole weekend off after like six or seven songs. Okay, you know, the pace is good. You know, it sounds fantastic. Okay, why not take the weekend off? Yeah, sure, let's do that. Okay, um, as, you men as mentioned, uh, 11th album, and it's been over 20 years since Glory to the Brave, so let's go for an easy question. Uh, so what have been the best moments for you guys with Hammerfall over the years? That we are still sitting here talking about an album that seemed to make a difference. Yeah, that's very well put. I totally agree with that. Yeah. And uh, you are starting the US tour with uh, fellow Swedes, uh, Sabaton, on the 4th of October mm -hmm. in US. And uh, so what are your expectations and what should the crowds be expecting? I'm really looking forward to this tour. Yeah. It's uh, 10 years since we did uh, the opposite in Europe when they were special guests for Hammerfall. And now we get the chance to be special guests to them. And I think it's, uh, I, I love the package. I think for the U.S. this is uh, one hell of a package to show that Sweden truly rocks, you know? I mean, it's, uh, we will go out there, we will do our thing, uh, we will be the only uh, guest, so we will have an hour to play, and that's pretty good. Yeah, it's, it, we have a chance now to reach out, because they play on a, a higher level than we do, because they invested a lot of time in touring the U.S. for many years. And that's how we have to do it over there. And for us, it's going to be good to, to take a step up and try to reach out to the people that like Sabaton, because I think they have a, a big chance of liking what we do as well, if uh, they're open-minded enough, and I, I, which I believe they are. And so it's, it's going to be really cool. Really looking forward to that. And also, even though we did two tours in North America on the previous album, we have a brand new album released in August, as you said, and this tour starts in October, so there will be a lot of new songs too. Yeah. So, even though, if you've seen Hammerfall before, I mean, this will be something brand new. As said, you started in um, 1993. So, what has changed in your live performances, maybe, maybe touring? from the, let's say, 90s to this day? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I would change, change. <laughs> yeah, everything, Yeah, I think. Uh, at, at least the, the, the approach and how we look at it, but also the, the one thing that hasn't changed, I think, is the energy level. If anything, it's gone up uh, for the live shows. And I, th that's something I feel really good about, being able to present an exciting live show, even if we are approaching 50, uh, you know, in, in age. Most bands are, <laughs> are, are taking it easier, going slower, but, you know, with the running of Joachim and all that, we, we're pushing it further instead. Uh, and it, it creates, I, I love that, that thing about heavy metal, because the, the, the atmosphere at a show, if it, the energy is there, the power is there, everybody's having a good time. Uh, so I think that's that's something that hasn't changed, and I just realized I'd answered the opposite of your question. But <laughs> <laughs> I think it's uh, especially for me, I'm enjoying this way more than I did in the beginning. I think I put way too much pressure on myself, not allowing myself to have fun, because I took it too serious in the beginning. Now, of course, I take it serious. I mean, this is such a big part of my life, but in the meantime, I also need to let myself enjoy the moment, you know, not putting too much pressure on myself. And as a result of that, Hammerfall sounds better than ever live. And that's uh, also makes me feel really proud because th this is uh, the best sounding live band that we've ever uh, ever been. And Absolutely. that's really cool. That's g looking good for the future. <laughs> well, we, we're not looking that good, but uh, the no. band, Hector, yes. he's still young. If you close your eyes, it's going to look good. <laughs> Yes. That's it. Okay, thank you so much and all the best. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Awesome, thank you. Thank you.